Hello there everybody and welcome to a nice uh, cool and breezy day. You know we're celebrating Pentecost this coming Sunday. Pentecost the coming of the Spirit. The Spirit, the word in Greek and in Hebrew means both breath of God. The breath and wind and spirit it means all those different things. And let me tell you if it means wind then the Spirit of God is with us today. It's quite breezy out here. Now the Apostle Paul talks about this too. The Apostle Paul, you know, he's he's kind of a, a tough dude to, to to understand some of the things he says, especially from the book of Romans. The book of Romans was written to a church in Rome that Paul did not start, but he's giving them a theological basis for their their life of faith. And he, he's trying to pull it all together. What has happened uh, in creation? What's happened with with God uh, sending Jesus, His Son, to this earth, and the, the death and resurrection of of Jesus? All that kind of stuff is is kind of compact in a very tough way in the Book of Romans. We're going to have part of that as our lesson this week because it's a part that talks about the Spirit of God being with us. It's going to be from the, let me get this right here, the 8th chapter of Romans. It's going to start with verse 22 and go through verse 27. Now in it, Paul is describing, well let me back up just for a minute. You have to realize Paul was an apocalyptic character. What do we mean by that? We all know the word apocalypse. It's like the end of the world, destruction, fire, you know, zombies, all that kind of stuff, right? Well, yeah, sort of. The Bible kind of has apocalyptic literature in it. And, and Paul was one who truly believed that everything we see around this, this whole world is going to undergo quite an upheaval but in a good way god is going to redeem this world that we're in all of his creation all of us and it's it's going to come but we just don't see it yet and we have to wait for it in hope and with patience and that's what this passage is all about it's not that well he's going to zap some people and save others and in that kind of apocalyptic thing and destroy everything else no it's going to be a new creation. He's going to fix everything that's gone wrong with this world. So you have language like this. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption. So. Paul's well aware of Pentecost and what happened on the day of Pentecost with those disciples in the upper room, which is what we'll get to a little bit later this week. Yeah, God's Spirit poured out upon us in a powerful, powerful way. Things would never be the same. But in a sense, that only adds to the agony, the agony that can only be equivalent to, let's see, a woman in labor. <laughs> agony. But... At the same time that it's painful and it hurts and you just want it to be over, it's also a moment that anticipates redemption, newness, a new life. Yeah, that's what Paul is getting at when he talks about this moaning and groaning. And the thing is, it's all of God's wonderful creation that is, is awaiting that day to come. Now, we had Psalm 104, which is a beautiful creation psalm that is also going to be read the second half of it this coming Sunday. And it gives a marvelous picture of what God has for us. But even then, you see how there's things that aren't perfect in it, like, well, the water's a chaos. God's kind of tamed those down already. Uh, the, the sea beast that's in there, Le Leviathan, and uh, there was a lot of scary stories about Le Leviathan, even a few in the Bible. And yet, God has transformed Leviathan into one of his little play creatures that he just kind of has fun with. So God is doing a new thing constantly, but there's going to be an ultimate thing that comes. And that's what the Apostle Paul was awaiting, and he talks about that in this passage. And But the important thing is, we who have been transformed 
have the first fruits of, of his spirit. We wait patiently. We wait in hope. And we, we never give up in that process of waiting because it's important to live out the life of love in this world until that day comes. Yeah, the Apostle Paul finally did accept the fact, you see it in some of his later writings, including Romans, that, you know, he thought it was going to happen like tomorrow, and it just didn't, but it's going to happen, and it will happen for you and for me. As we wait, filled with his spirit, filled with his love for that day of ultimate redemption. Okay, look at that. The chickens have all quieted down. Well, almost. <laughs> so maybe this is the day. Well, it is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, that's another Apostle Paul quote. God's blessings be with you this day.